안녕하십니까? 니콜라스 입니다. And today we're going to talk about the difference between a CPU and a GPU. We can tell the difference from the start by looking at their name. CPU is Central Processing Unit and GPU is Graphics Processing Unit. Okay, so we have the definitions, but we know that gamers need good GPUs if they want their games to run well. Now the question here is, why? Why do we need a GPU? Isn't the CPU fast enough? And what about people that are using GPUs outside of gaming? Why are AI researchers using GPU? Or what about Bitcoin miners? Why do they choose GPUs over CPUs? Does that mean that GPUs are faster than CPUs? If that's true, then why is Intel still in business? Do we sell the Intel stock and buy Nvidia stock only? Let's see. A CPU is, I would say, the most important part of the computer. It's literally the brain. The CPU is the one in charge of talking to the RAM memory to put data or bring data from there. They also run all the code that we write. They are the ones that are running our software. They are also the ones that talk to devices like a hard drive or your keyboard, for example. Again, the CPU is a really big deal for the computer. It is literally the brain. Usually, CPUs can only handle one task at a time, which is already incredibly fast, but we humans want more speed. So to allow the CPU to sort of multitask, we gave the CPU multi-cores. A core is the one that handles computation tasks like running the program and doing all the logical operations. But with multi-core CPUs, the brain of the computer is divided in sub-brains. This allows the CPU to run more than one task at a time, one on each core. The Intel Core i9 Extreme Edition processor has 18 cores and has a speed of 3 GHz. To understand how fast that is, we need to understand that in CPUs, Tasks are executed by cycles. Simple instructions like getting data from memory or writing data to memory take one cycle to complete. A core with three gigahertz can run three billion cycles per second. With 18 cores, that is 54 billion cycles per second. That's insane. So if CPUs are super fast, then why do we need GPUs? GPUs, also known as graphic cards, were created by NVIDIA in 1999 to be used for computer graphics and image processing initially. The thing that makes GPUs different from CPUs and what makes them very well suited for image processing and computer graphics is the fact that a GPU is optimized to run many tasks in parallel. But hold on a second because we just said that the Intel Core i9 processor is also able to run many tasks in parallel because it is multi-core, right? Yes, the Intel CPU is multi-core but it is not multi-core enough. For example, the NVIDIA Geoforce 3090 graphics card has 10,496 cores, and each core has a speed of 1.7 gigahertz, which means that the card is running more than 17 trillion cycles per second. If you compare 17 trillion with the miserable 54 billion cycles that we get from Intel, it looks like we have a winner. Now the question is, why aren't they putting more cores in the CPU? 18 cores from Intel compared to more than 10,000 cores from Nvidia is an embarrassment. What is Intel doing? Are they asleep? Should I get a refund of all the Intel stock that I bought? The reason why the GPU can have more than 10,000 cores while Intel can only push to 18 cores is because the cores of the GPU and the CPU are not the same. CPU cores have a bigger set of instructions. They can do more things. This is also why Intel can only fit 18 in their processor, because they're also super power hungry. This is because GPU cores are, in contrast, designed to perform a smaller range of operations. Mostly math operations with vectors and matrix multiplications, but very fast and at the same time, in parallel. This is why GPUs are used for rendering graphics or image manipulation. The GPU is able to do the number crushing required to do the calculations for all the pixels in the screen at the same time. For example, if we have an image with 12 million pixels, let's say, and we say that we want to double the size of the image, we want to resize the image, it means that we have to multiply each pixel of that image by two. This is a simple operation, multiply by two. But because we have to do this for each pixel in the screen at the same time, this task will be better handled by the GPU. And that's actually a dumb example. Actual calculations done by GPUs when working with 3D images like in a video game are way more complex than that. 
For example, in a 3D video game, a GPU might be calculating what is the amount of light that is reflecting from an object, taking into account the material and the texture from the object, and also taking into account the angle of the light, as well as the camera position on the scene. And then the GPU has to take all these 3D coordinates and translate them from a 3D space to a 2D image that the screen is able to display. That's a lot of number crunching. Now, if the video game is running at 60 frames per second, that means that that calculation has to happen 60 times per second, all the time, at the same time. That's a lot. GPUs are very good at solving problems that are embarrassingly parallel. That's their real name. An embarrassing parallel problem is a problem that requires little to no effort to be divided in multiple tasks that can be executed in parallel. Which brings us to the next part the areas where GPUs are being used apart from video games and image manipulation. An area that can benefit a lot from parallel computation, which is what the GPU provides, is AI, for example. Because training a machine learning model is a task that can be accomplished in parallel, GPUs are the perfect tool for the job and they will make the training process faster than if it was done using a CPU. This usage of graphic cards used for something apart from gaming is what's known as GPGPU which means general purpose computing on GPUs. And it's an area that explores all the different computation problems that can be solved using GPUs. Like for example, scientific research, astronomical research, biology research, all those things. So now that we understand the difference between a CPU and a GPU, and now that we know how GPUs can be used in different areas apart from learning, let me tell you about the sponsor of today's video. KT Cloud would like to let you know about their new hyperscale AI computing service. With hyperscale, you can run your code on GPU powered servers, which as we know, is something you would need if you are training your AI models, for example. The problem is that GPU servers are expensive. In Linode, for example, the smallest GPU server that you can rent costs $1,000 a month, and you have to pay whether you use it or not. But the cool thing about hyperscale is that you only have to pay for the time that your code is using the GPUs. Which means that if you only use the GPUs for 10 minutes, you are going to pay for 10 minutes only. In other server providers, when your AI model grows and you need more GPU power, you usually have to change servers, which means re-uploading the code, which could be very annoying. With hyperscale, you don't have to change servers because hyperscale is going to scale based on the resources that you need. GPU resources and GPU clusters can be expanded as much as you want. Usually, you will have to refactor your code if you want to run in the GPU to take advantage of all the multiple cores and the parallelism. But with hyperscale, this power distribution happens out of the box, which means that you don't have to refactor your code, but you will still be able to take full advantage of the power of the GPU. If you want to learn more and you want to try hyperscale AI computing service, please click the link below where you will be able to register for a free hands-on seminar provided by KT. Thanks to KT for sponsoring this video and thank you for watching this video. Let me know in the comments what do you think of this video and what video you would like to see next and I will make my best to make it happen. Stay happy, stay free, stay healthy. Eat kimchi, kamsamida, sarangheyo. See you on the next one. Bye-bye.